Hi there, my name is Nicole Young. I'm a photographer and an educator over at NicoleZ.com. In this video, I'm gonna go over the history panel. I'll describe what it is and how you can use it. I'm also going to give a few examples of why you might want to use the history panel, and I'll show you how you can save a fully edited photo with that history intact so you can access it later on. Let's go ahead and get started. I have a DNG file right here. I'm gonna go ahead and open it into Luminar by dragging it over the icon and then releasing. The history panel inside of Luminar is located at the top, but you may notice that right now it's grayed out. And if I click on it, nothing happens. The reason it's grayed out is because I have made no edits to this photo. I've only opened it into Luminar. But once I start making edits or any type of adjustment to this photo, then it starts to come into play. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna add a filter, and here I'll add a raw develop filter, and I'll make some basic changes. I'll increase the temperature, increase the exposure. I'm gonna decrease those highlights a little bit to prevent them from getting a little bit blown out there on the nose, and I'll increase the shadows. Now let's go back up to that history panel and see what happened. If I click on the history panel dropdown, I see all of those changes that I made in the order that I made them. The history panel is one of those tools that you may not find yourself using all the time, but when you need it, it is really handy. One obvious way of using this panel is to kind of backtrack to some of the edits that you've made. Now, if you notice, as I go back, kind of back in time to some of these edits, the other edits that are kind of on top of it, in this case, the shadows, highlights, and exposure settings, they're still there. The history panel doesn't remove those settings until you start making other changes. So if I were to stop here and go back to just those temperature settings that I made with that raw develop filter, and let's say I go back and I want to redo some of those settings. So I want to redo the exposure and I'll just stop there. Now, if I go back up to that history panel, you can see that those previous edits that I made are now gone. So the exposure setting that I just made kind of erased those other settings. And this is just how the history panel works. One handy use of the history panel is to start completely over from scratch. It doesn't really come in handy as much when you've only made one adjustment to your image like I have here. I only have one filter added. But let's say you have a photo with a lot of changes to it. All you need to do is click on this little circle icon and that will take you all the way back to your original photo. It's just a good way to kind of start over from scratch. Maybe you've added too many filters and you don't really like the look you're going for, so you just want to start over. That's a good way to go ahead and jump right to that original image. I'm gonna go back up though to that exposure setting and make a few edits here because I kind of want to have a good starting place so I can show you the next useful feature of the history panel. One of the ways that I like to use the history panel most is when I'm working with presets. I'm gonna go ahead and activate that preset panel and I'd like to apply a preset on top of the raw settings that I've made. I don't wanna erase those raw settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that plus overlay preset icon Next, I'm going to go into the categories and I'm going to choose one of my preset packs, the Sky and Cloud presets. So let's say that I'm working on this photo and I want to drop in a new sky. Well, I have a lot of presets here that I can work with, but I'm not really sure which one I want to use. And because I can't really see all of these presets full screen, it makes it a little difficult to choose them, uh, you know, because I'm gonna have to keep sliding back and forth and going back to the ones uh, that I liked. So the history panel can make it a lot easier to kind of help you out in choosing which preset you want to work with. So I'll go through and I'll pick a few of these that I, I think I like, but you know, I wanna see them a little bit closer see them full screen instead of, on the, instead of with the uh, tiny little icon here. And you can see I have about 50 or so presets. So I have quite a few to choose from. Okay, so now I have kind of selected a handful of presets and I know, let's say I know that those are the ones that I really like uh, just by looking at their little thumbnails. But having to go through and pick those again and slide back and forth, that's gonna take just a little more time than I want to actually spend on choosing this preset. So what I can do instead is go up to that history panel and here I can see all of those presets that I added. So now I can just use this panel to preview the ones that I wanna work on. I can even 
hide that preset panel so I have a much larger screen to work on. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on the history dropdown and let's try 34. Basically, I can just go through each of these and just pay attention to the screen. So I'm just looking at these to see which one I like best, and I think I'm actually going to stick with number 24. So the history panel is just a really good, useful tool to help me figure out which preset I want to work with. Another way to use the history panel is to backtrack when you're masking. And let me show you a good example of when this is useful. I'm on the layer where I added the sky preset, and I'm going to click on that brush icon to access those masking tools. I'm going to start out with a gradient mask, and I really just want to mask the bottom part of this so that way I can kind of hide that overlay over the grass area. It's very subtle, but I still want to kind of make it blend a little bit better. And if I hold the shift key and click on that mask, I can actually see the change that it's making because it basically disables that mask while I'm clicking it. Okay, so that looks good. Now I want to switch over to the brush tool to mask away some of that sky on the sheep. So let me select that brush tool from those masking options. I'm going to make sure that I'm painting out, so I'm going to press the X key, which will give me a minus sign for my brush mode. And now I'm just going to brush over the image. Now I intentionally made some kind of bad brushing strokes there, and I'll show you with the eyeball by toggling that. You can see I went way out of where that sheep is. But let's say I didn't notice that right away, and I kept masking, and I did a nice little masking job. Now I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh man, I really made some mistakes. But I don't want to reset that mask because I already added a gradient mask and the only mistakes I made were with the brush tool. Well, this is when the history panel kind of comes in handy. If you click on that history panel, I can see that I have all of those brush strokes, but right below it, I have a gradient mask. So if I click on the gradient mask, now I've erased those brush strokes, but I did not erase the entire mask. So I still have that gradient mask applied. So now I can go back into the image and do a little bit better masking job to get some of that sky kind of erased from the sheep. Now lastly, if you want to save all of these edits, let's say you want to make sure that everything that's up here in this history panel stays in the image, uh, then you can save that inside of a Luminar file. Now you might want to do this if you are working on, let's say, a client photo and you not only want to retain the edits such as the filters and any type of masking or any layer that you've added, but you also want to save the history drop-down states, all of the things that you see right here. In order to do that, you need to save it as a Luminar file, which is different from exporting the photo. So first, real quick, let me kind of show you if I wanted to export this photo as an image I might share online, I'm going to go over to the right and click on this little export button and I'd click export to image. And this is going to allow me to save this photo as a JPEG or any type of format that you see right here on this list. Instead, what I want to do here is save this as my working file. So I'm going to go up to file, save, and you can see this is going to save it as an LMNR or a Luminar file. And then down at the bottom, the option to save the history is automatically checked. Now, for those of you who are using a Windows computer, this is not yet available in your version. So for now, you probably won't see this option when you save. On my computer, I have the option to make this Windows compatible, which will not save that history to that document. So I'll go ahead and save this file. Now let me go ahead and close the image and then I'll reopen it to show you how that works. So there's my Luminar file. I'll go ahead and drag and drop it over the Luminar icon to open it. And there I have all of those edits that I made along with that history included at the top.